What's up guys and girls, my name is Guy Blackwood, also known as GazzyB123 and welcome to episode 6 of the GazzyB Poker Vlog. Today we're playing 1020 in the Hustler Casino in Los Angeles. Quick shout out to the Hustler for allowing me to film, really grateful and a quick shout out to you guys as well for tuning in, for liking, subbing, all that great stuff. The channel's growing really well so far after 5 or 6 episodes, I'm really happy with everything and I couldn't do it without you guys so thank you very much for that. Uh, let's get straight into today's action, we're playing pretty short handed all day. Uh, which makes for a lot of pots, lots of action, uh, very little folding preflop, which is always nice. So yeah, let's get straight into it. It's a beautiful Friday morning in Los Angeles. I take the 40 minute Uber drive to The Hustler. I exchange $10,000 for chips. I'm only buying in for 3K, but I want to be able to rebuy if I get stacked, or even if I lose a few hundred, I want to have a top up on hand. I take a walk over to the table. I find my seat. I sit down. Let the battle begin. Onto our first hand of the session, we've got 7-6 of clubs in the cutoff. MP has opened, I have called and the big blind has called as well. This call might look a little loose, but remember there's no rake in this game, which means we get to slightly widen our calling range as preflop. Big blind checks, MP checks, and I decide to stab here for one third. It's a pretty reasonable board for my range, so I want to do a decent amount of stabbing here. So I use a one third size. If it was a board like Ace-6 deuce or King-King-4 that I'm not stabbing very often at all on, I'd use a half pot size, but pretty good board for me, so I bet one third. Is it 240? Big blind doesn't waste any time. He raises to $240. It folds back round to me. I think this is just a very clear call. Let's try and realize our equity in position. My opponent checks and I think for a few seconds and decide to check back. My opponent could be trying to double check raise which would be pretty ugly because we're doing very poorly versus the value parts of that range. So he checks, I check back and we're off to the river. Not much to be scared of on the river, I don't think my opponent is going to play pocket 9s or jack 10 like this. I don't think our hand is strong enough to raise though, so when my opponent bets out, I call pretty quickly. He announces two pair on a paired board, which means that our three of a kind is of course the winner, and we scoop in our first pot of the day. Not long after that hand, we pick up a very beautiful looking pocket aces. Action has gone open in the cutoff to 60, the small blind is called, and I have squeezed out of the big blind to $320. It is music to my ears when after tanking for about a minute the cutoff announces $800. What a great spot for us very early in the session. It's back on us and we've got a decision to make. Do we want to go ahead and shove or do we want to call sometimes and allow our opponent to hang himself with some of his 4-bet bluffs? I actually spoke about this hand with my friend Smith afterwards and he actually recommended min 5 betting sometimes, which I think is the most optimal play, uh, exploitably in a live environment. However, I wasn't really thinking about that in-game, I was deciding between shoving and calling. I decided to just shove, which I don't like in hindsight. Uh, the reason for that is we do want to call and allow our opponent to have some of those 4-bet bluffs, as opposed to just shoving and isolating his range to kings and queens and jacks. I thought my shove was okay readless, but in hindsight I think we want to have some calls in there as well. So I shove. All in. And my opponent snap folds, which is living proof that we don't always want to shove here. We do want to mix in some calls sometimes. It's been a really good start to the day. We're up about $1,400 or so, which settles us down a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous coming into the day, given the beating I got last week in this game. It does sort of give you the fear a little bit when you come back, but this is a really nice way to settle us down. Lots of small pots coming our way as well. Lots of C-bets getting through. I'm really focused and ready for the rest of the day. Up next, MP is open to $60. I am in the hijack with pocket nines. This is going to be a very high frequency 3-bet for me, but remember the rake structure does allow for some flats, so I randomize for it. I land on call. It falls around to the button. He's a very solid, very aggressive live reg. He puts in the squeeze, and both players call. We're three ways to the flop. Oh my god, it's queen 9-5. We flopped the set multi... Oh wait, hang on, it's queen 6-5. That actually happened. I thought I flopped the set multi-way, got all excited. Realised the 9 was a 6. Both players check fold. Next hand. Up next, we've got four titties under the gun. I've opened to 60. Button is called. Small blind calls. Big blind calls. And we are four ways to the flop. Not a great flop for us. Four ways, it's very likely someone has an ace. So when it's checked to me, I check. Unfortunately, the button checks back. 
The big blind leads out for 150 bucks. The big blind has got a lot of draws here that no player at the table can have. For example, five do suited, four do suited, 10, seven suited, all those sorts of hands that the button and the small blind are not gonna call. So when he leads out, it's a very clear call for us. The button takes this opportunity to raise to $500. This is a little on the confusing side, given the fact he's checked back the flop. There aren't too many combos of hands like pocket nines, pocket sixes, ace nine. I expect him to bet all those multi-weight in position. So he's repping really thin when it comes to value. Hands like ace three suited or pocket threes. He's also got a lot of turn draws, hands like 5-4 suited, lots of club draws, even a hand like 10-8 of clubs that's decided to check back the flop that he now thinks can raise multi-way. So when you factor in he's got a lot of draws in his range and not too much value, I decide I'm going to call the turn here and probably call most rivers in the deck as well. On the river I of course check on over to my opponent, he takes about 90 seconds and eventually checks back. I assume I win when he doesn't value bet the river, so I announce queens and turn my hand over. My opponent however has ace jack of hearts, it's a really funky line for my opponent but I actually really like it thinking about the hand. I think it's well played by him, on to the next one. 60. I think I'm thinking about Next up, we look down at Ace King of Spades in the cutoff. As I look down at it, I get a little bit of PTSD. Remember, this is the first hand that we had last week when we lost those two flips. I open it up to 60. My opponent three bets on the button to 200, and I waste no time putting in the four bet to $560. Given it's cutoff versus button and we're only $3,500 effective, I am of course ready to call the 5-bet jam. However, my opponent takes his time before just calling and we go heads up to the flop. What a great flop for us. We've got top two pair in a 4-bet pot. Not only that, but my opponent is going to have a lot of hands that want to continue on this board. A lot of ace x, a lot of king x, a lot of gut shots, even some flush draws as well. Hands like 7-8 suited that are going to 3-bet sometimes and call a 4-bet. So I see no reason not to bet here. I bet 25% pot. As mentioned, my opponent does have a lot of hands that can continue here. However, unfortunately for us, he doesn't have one of those hands. He tanks for about 60 seconds and eventually makes the fold. Ah, what could have been? Next up, we have Ace Queen off in the cutoff. Really standard stuff. We open big blind defense, heads up to the flop. Double Broadway boards are generally quite good flops for our range. Not too bad a flop for our hand either with the overcard and the gut shot. I want to bet this combo really wide. It's a little bit of an obsolete strategy to just be betting one third here. This is a spot where we actually prefer using bigger bet sizes. I personally use half pot here, so I bet half pot and my opponent calls. The turn pairs the second card and my opponent leads into me for $120. This strategy is actually fine. In theory, we're not supposed to see bet that many second pairs, which means that when we do bet and my opponent calls, he's supposed to have more turn trips in his range, which means his range can justify leading. It's not a strategy you can implement until you've studied it, but it does make a lot of sense. I of course call on the turn with my gut shot and on the river my opponent checks, we quickly check back, our hand is way too strong to bluff, we beat a lot of our opponent's turn bluffs which is proven given the fact he's got ace 10 and we scoop the pot. V by one. <laughs> in this next hand the action falls around to me in the small blind and I do something a little different and just call here. Now you can't do this in a 1-2 or a 2-5, I know I keep talking about it but the rake is really really high and you'd need to play a perfect limp strategy to come even close to beating the rake. However, in this spot, there is no rake, so I think we can call relatively wide. It is a spot I should study before I implement, but I decide to call here. My opponent makes it $100. I limp call, and we're heads up to the flop. After the flop goes check, check. We make top pair on the turn. Leading here is probably fine, but I decide to check this time. My opponent bets $70, and I make a relatively quick call. The river's a 5, 6, 8 gets there, but I'm not too worried about that in my opponent's range. I check, and my opponent bets $500, which is an overbet. This is a spot where we're going to have a lot of 7, 8, 9, 8, 9, 10 type hands that are going to have to just check fold. However, disguise top pairs, really easy call for us. My opponent shows a bluff, and we scoop in the pot. 110. 110. Pretty funky hand coming up now, so we've got Ace King off on the button, there's been a limp under the gun, we've isolated to $110, only the limper calls and we go to the flop. 
It's a pretty sweet flop for us. We've got top pair, as well as that, the board is really quite connected with the eight and the seven, so my opponent can have hands like jack nine, jack ten, ten nine, all these sort of straight draws and gut shots that are gonna have to continue. So I bet half pot, my opponent thinks for a second, and he makes the call. It's a really nice turn for us. We've turned top two pair. I continue to bet here for $370. I am mindful of the fact my opponent is probably going to fold a decent amount. However, betting here is absolutely mandatory in position. We want to play for stacks. If the SPR is like 0.7, we can check this back sometimes. But given the fact we won't be able to stack our opponent if we check back, it's a mandatory bet. $700. Even. My opponent raises to $700, obviously this should be $740, however it doesn't matter. He's only got about $500 behind after this, so I go ahead and put him all in. I don't really see the point in calling. If he's got on like A7 and the river's an 8, we might not stack him. So I'm ready to play for all. My opponent quickly calls. I was getting we were a little concerned our opponent might have a set, however he's got bottom two pair. It's a bit of a nasty cooler for him, however we're certainly not complaining. We drag in a very nice pot. Mostly 70. Up next is a very funky hand. So we've got pocket sevens on the button. The action falls around to us and we open. Slightly larger open size on the button. We make it $70. That good aggressive reg is in the big blind and he proves his aggressiveness by three betting to $320. Nothing else we can do here. Really easy call. Let's see if we can flop a set. Are a little bit. We don't flop a set and whilst it might look like a not too bad board for us, remember the big blind is extremely competent, he knows that he's going to have to 3 bet hands like 10-8 suited, 10-9 suited, jack-10, queen-10 at a very high frequency and even some ace-10 offsuit, 10-7 suited type hands. So we are mindful of the fact that he can connect really well with that 10. He bets $400, we obviously can't fold just yet so I go ahead and make the call. The turn double pairs the board and there are of course a whole lot less 10x combinations in my opponent's range now. He does check it on over to us which I expect him to do with a lot of stronger hands as well as the weaker parts of his range. So I don't think we want to stab this turn too wide with our pocket sevens. Maybe 25% or so for protection purposes but I roll the RNG, I roll a check back and we're off to the river. It's a bit of a brick on the river. My opponent can have some 6-5 suited and some 7-6 suited, although that doesn't really change anything. My opponent bets $500. I really like this size. It's going to put my you know, my king-queen floats and my ace-jack floats in a really tough spot. And I've got a hand like pocket fives, pocket fours. Really difficult spot for them as well because I know my opponent is capable of betting this size with a 10 or aces or kings or pocket nines or pocket eights or even 6-5 suited as mentioned. I spin the RNG. It lands on call. Unfortunately for us, my opponent was bluffing and we drag in a very nice pot. 60. Yeah, I want to make the vlog. I want to call this a very bad day. Oh shit. He wants to make the vlog as well. He's already in it from last week. <laughs> oh. This is a complete nothing hand from us, however I wanted to use this clip to take the opportunity to say a massive thank you to any player that I've played against that's taken an interest in the camera, or asked for my YouTube channel, or subscribed. I'm really, really grateful. You're all heroes. Thank you so much. It's gone to that time of the day, the straddle is now on, we're playing 10-20 with a $40 straddle and a $20 big blind ante, we're five-handed, every player at this table is very good, very competent and very deep as well. The action's on the button, he opens to 110, I defend the straddle with 10-8 of clubs. We flop an open-ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. This is a reasonable candidate to check raise when my opponent bets $200. However, I personally prioritize the Queen-10 combos purely because the overcard is an out uh, versus a hand like H-Jack or King-Jack. So when my opponent bets, I spin for a low-frequency raise, I find the call, and we're off to the turn. My opponent continues to bet for $400. It's a really interesting turn card. We've got a really nice 10x blocker, and as well as that, we've got equity with our open-ended straight draw if we were to raise and get called here. I think about it for a few seconds, and I do decide to raise. I announce 1120. Did my voice sound shaky to you there? I did my best to say 1120 and not 1120! Because I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit scary. So I make the raise to 11.20, my opponent thinks for a few seconds, eventually he calls and we're off to the river. 
2200. After I announce 2200, I'm very, very happy to fade the absolute snap call from my opponent. This means that we have a chance of our bluff getting through. My opponent is deep in the tank. After about 60 seconds, I can feel the pulse in my neck really going. I don't cover it though. I think that would be a bit of a tell to sit there and then cover the pulse in my neck. So all I do is I stare at the board. I try and think about how I'd be acting if I did have the queen 10 that I was repping and I sit there as still as possible. I've got a set. Sorry? I've got a set. Okay. After another 60 seconds of tanking, my opponent tells me that he's got a set and I am so tempted to talk back to him and say something like, me too, or oh, how big is your set, or oh, I'm bluffing, or something really stupid like that. These guys are all really experienced live regs. They can pick up tells very easily. So instead of talking back to the guy, I just say, okay, I give him a little smile. I continue to stare at the board, begging the poker gods to let him fold his set. At this point in the hand, I'm pretty sure if this guy took two seconds to look at me, his chips would be in the middle. My heart is pounding, my neck is beating like a fucking drum. I'm just sitting there begging him to fold in my mind. This is the longest three minutes of my life. Oh my god, are you going to call or fold? I just can't take it anymore. After another minute goes by, he picks up chips. No, 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 please, no, put them back, no, no! After four and a half minutes, he finally picks up his cards and throws them to the dealer. What a relief. Our bluff has gotten through. Woo! As you've just seen, I have turned over the eight of clubs. This isn't a dick move to my opponent. It's nothing against him. I just need to check myself into don't show your bluffs anonymous because I always show my bluffs and it's really fucking stupid. I should just keep it to myself and not show off. I should just go ahead and muck. But I feel like I have to, in my mind, show the eight of clubs. That's all from me for this week, guys. Really hope you enjoyed the show. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and click that like button and also subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like it, click it anyway. I'd be very grateful. Um, what about $4,800, which is obviously really nice. Um, sort of helps out given the fact we lost 85, 86, 100 the week before, something like that. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can break even for 1020 and 102040 40 before the trip is out. Uh, and maybe even win a few bucks in the process, which would be really nice. Uh, other than that, had a really nice week in the commerce, won a few bucks. Also hit a bad beat jackpot for a few more dollars as well, which was really nice. Been playing in the commerce for years and years and never even had a table share. So my pocket queens lost to ace six. Uh, and somehow the guy's kicker played a run out ace four deuce, ace ace, uh, which was really nice, really uh, a lot of fun. I uh, got one more week in LA, then off to Las Vegas on the 18th of May, EDC for three days recovery for a week and then uh the world series of poker starts we will be playing tournaments all summer really excited really looking forward to the max pain the busting out with like one hour left on the third day and stuff like that it's gonna be a lot of fun um yeah really looking forward to it so that's all from me for this week and i'll see you next week take it easy